In this video we're going to talk about constant velocity motion. So treating any object as uh, a particle, it takes a very small amount of space, a particle that is travelling at a constant velocity. And our object in this case is going to be a um, little cart. Here we go. You can tell why I am a physics teacher and not an art teacher. And that cart is going to be travelling to the left at 2 meters per second. Now I've drawn this number line, I've defined an origin, so um, the place where uh, the position is zero, and I'm going to define this direction as positive, so to the right is positive and to the left is negative. Now we know um, that uh, we can talk about the speed of an object, and in this case we're going to write that the speed is two, let's just say they're meters, meters per second. Now this is a scalar. It just talks about the size of um, the, the speed. It's just a size of that, um, uh, that motion, a magnitude of that motion. We can also define velocity, which is two meters per second, but a velocity is a vector and so it needs to have a direction associated with it. So we could say to the left, or we could say in the negative, and that's just my shorthand for negative, direction. And that's because velocity is a vector. We could also write velocity as an arrow, as we've done in the diagram, two meters per second. So we're going to draw a motion map of um, the motion of this cart. It starts off at um, positive 4. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 along there. So I'm just going to write that is the first position. Now it's moving 2 metres every second. So that means 1 second later we're going to write its position again. It's going to be at positive 2. 2 seconds later it's going to be at 0. 2 seconds later minus 2 minus 4 and minus 6. And I'm just going to draw in just to specify that it's moving that direction in between those time points. So just over here where we talked about speed as a scalar and velocity as a vector, we're going to talk about distance as a scalar and displacement as a vector. And just to clarify the difference between those two. Now in this case uh, the cart moved uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So it moved a total distance of 10 metres. Full stop. We're just talking about the total distance that it moved, the size of that distance. Now the displacement in this case also happens to be 10 metres, but we could say it's 10 metres to the left. We would need to specify its direction because a vector has a direction as well as a magnitude. We could say it's 10 metres in the negative direction, or we could write negative 10. Or, again, we could just write 10 metres with the direction specified on there by drawing that arrow. In a more general sense, just say if we had a journey starting at point A and going on a big, long journey, perhaps it travelled, or the object travelled a distance of 100 metres, so the distance would be 100 metres, but the displacement is actually very small. The displacement here, I'll write D-I-S-P, displacement, may be very small. It may just say it was 10 metres down. We would need to spe specify the um, direction there. So that's just another example of the difference between distance and displacement. So now moving back to the motion of our cart, on the left here, I'm going to draw up a graph which describes this motion as a function of time, or describes the displacement as a function of time. And I've also drawn in there a velocity um, as a function of time, a graph for that as well. So now we can start plotting some points. At time equals zero, which is this first uh, dot uh, over here, the position or the displacement is positive four. It's on the positive side of the origin. So at time equals zero, 
I can put a dot on my graph as positive 4. After one second has elapsed, the displacement is positive 2. So I go to the one second point on uh, my displacement time graph and go up to the displacement of 2. At time equals 3, excuse me, time equals 2, the displacement is 0. So there's my third point. At time equals 3, which is here, we have negative 2 and so on. And this is quite tricky on here, but what we should find is that if we draw, what we should find is if we look at those points and try and look at a trend, that if we've drawn them well, we should get a nice straight line that goes through those points. Now obviously I've um, not plotted some of them perfectly, but uh, that is uh, what we've got there. If we look at the velocity as a function of time, at every time point along here, the velocity is always the same. It's always 2 meters per second in the negative direction. So if we, it doesn't matter what our time period is, our velocity is always going to be negative 2. So you can probably see that we're going to get a lovely horizontal line which indicates there is a constant velocity. So there's our horizontal line indicating a constant velocity. You may recall from your maths that whenever you see a straight line, the equation of that line, if we had plotted x against y, would be y equals mx plus c, where m is the slope of the line and c is the y-intercept. And if we look at what the physical meaning of that slope is, slope is, as you know, the rise over the run of the graph, which is the amount of change in displacement over the change in time. And that, of course, equals the velocity. If we also go back and start thinking about what is the, whoop, it's going to be a bit of a crossover there, what is the physical meaning of the y-intercept, you can see there that it's just the position at time equals zero. So the y-intercept is, if you like, the uh, initial position, initial displacement. So let's go back to our equation for a straight line graph. Instead of, so here we are, we're down here now. Instead of y, we're actually dealing with the displacement. Instead of the slope, we're actually dealing with the velocity. Instead of the x, we don't have an x-axis, we actually have a time axis. And instead of a y-intercept of c, we have a y-intercept of the initial displacement. So if we rearrange that, d minus initial d is vt. This is actually the change in displacement equals vt. And if we rearrange that, you might see something that you recognize. It's the change in position divided by the time elapsed, which is essentially our first equation of motion for constant velocity. So we can represent motion of a particle in lots of different ways. We can use a motion map, like this one up here. We can use different graphs, so displacement time graph and or velocity time graph. And we can also use an equation. So all these different uh, ways of presenting that information are all equivalent. And it doesn't matter how you solve a problem, really. Uh, as you go on, become more comfortable with using equations, you might find that the equation is the easiest way to get your answer, the quickest way, but all of these different ways are equivalent.